Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my guide of the bank contract in GTA Online. First up, if you want to get started with these contracts and you don't know how to, then make sure to check out the eye in the top right of your screen for not only a video of that, but also a playlist with all the other contract guides I've done thus far. It should be noted that it is possible that your bank contract will not be on your whiteboard in your outer shop, but if that's the case, just simply keep playing contracts until it pops up. So without further ado, let's get us started with the first prep mission, which is the thermal charges. There's a total of two different locations for this mission. One is in Grapeseed and the other one is Grand Sonora Desert. The mission itself doesn't change and the only thing that is different is going to be the location. Obviously, because with everything that I do in these guides, we're going to be skipping over the driving section and just get to the good part. Once you arrive at either of the locations, you will see some cops and gang members having some friendly discussions about what exactly is happening at the local farm. Of course, because you're just here for the thermal charges, you have a few options that you can do. You can either decide to give yourself some additional style points by just jumping in there, grabbing the bag without even getting off your bike, and then driving off again. Or you can also shoot an RPG and some explosives in there because the thermal charges will not take any explosive damage so you don't have to worry about accidentally blowing them up. Or you can go the old fashioned way by just shooting everyone in the head. Whatever you prefer, as long as you get those thermal charges and get out of there, you're all good. Obviously you have to then make your way back to your outer shop again and you will have to lose the cops. Very easy way to do this is by either calling your terabyte and making sure that the thermal charges are not on your back, which you can very easily get rid of by just quickly killing yourself or getting killed by the cops. Or you can also decide to accept a job invite that typically is in your phone anyways from either Martin or Gerald or whoever. And you can just quickly join the job and then leave again and your wanted level will be gone. And then you can just waltz your way to your outer shop and it will be mission complete. Moving on to the second setup, which is the signal jammer setup. This one, I'm not going to lie, this is probably not really going to be worth it as a solo player. So if you want to save yourself a bunch of time, launch the mission and then instantly quit the session so you can save yourself a bunch of time. However, if you do want to make your life a tiny bit easier as a solo player, then doing the first two signal jammers on the route that I'm showing now right now is probably going to be a useful thing. The signal jammers do one thing and one thing only. It will give you a two minute window where you will not have any cops after you. And when I say two minute window, I do mean from the very first bank that you hit and there's not going to be a reset on the time. That really is it. And as a solo player, obviously you have no use for that whatsoever, considering the fact that you will not be able to rob all the six banks within two minutes. From my experience, after the second bank in the finale, you will already have cops after you, so these signal jammers aren't really all that worth it if you are a solo player. If you are a full group of four, then yeah, it might make sense to do this, to try and hit all the banks within two minutes without any cops after you. But as a solo player, there isn't really much point. However, if you are someone that wants to do this mission regardless and tries to see if you can get all the signal jammers in one mission, which is gonna be rather difficult to do regardless, even with like air vehicles and the Presses Marks 2, you will probably have a little bit of trouble with finding the B bank. So for that reason, I will show that on screen so you can save yourself a lot of frustration. And yes, unfortunately, I do speak from experience because Twitch chat had to tell me where it was. Another reason to not do the signal jammer mission is because it's effectively the exact same mission as the finale. The only difference is that you go in the bank instead of outside by just planting a signal jammer. So you're probably best off just saving yourself the 10 minutes this mission would take to complete. Speaking of the finale, the weapon load that we're going to be picking is going to be the Hustler because the Bullpup Rifle Mark II is an excellent weapon. For vehicle, you can decide to just take the Santa's Tailgater, but I would personally advise you to get the Jester RR with the Backlovers on there. For the reason that it is a quick vehicle and also those Backlovers especially are effectively bulletproof. Meaning that when you drive off from the bank, the cops will not be able to shoot you in the back, which is very useful for not dying. Of course, there is also other vehicles available in the Los Santos Tuners update with these back lovers, so if you have one of those, then make sure to try and apply those too. The first step in a successful bank robbery is definitely going to be the plan, and also the route. So for that reason, here's the route that you should follow to do this the most effective and most quickest way. The mission is pretty straightforward. You go to each individual bank, you walk in, you do a thermal charge on the vault door, and you walk in, grab some cash, and walk out again. 
As soon as you walk out, you typically have two choices. Either you can decide to shoot the four or five cops that are in front of you, or you can just instantly get into your car and drive off. The latter being a little bit more risky, but it will also be a little bit quicker. And also considering the fact you have those back lovers on the back, you will be fine with getting shot in the back. But if you're using the tailgater, the likelihood of you getting shot in the back is higher, so it might be a better idea to shoot the cops before you get into your car. There are no additional cops that will spawn until you drive off, so you shouldn't have to worry too much if you don't spend about an hour trying to look at the beautiful sights or whatever. Just simply keep moving from bank to bank, following the route that I gave you and it shouldn't take you too long to do all of them at once. As mentioned before the signal jammers are relatively useless inside of this mission and they will start triggering at the moment you hit the first bank. When you hit the first bank the signal jammer will be activating and the next two minutes you will not get any cops. If that's something that's useful to you enjoy I guess but the signal jammers themselves I don't think are really worth the time that you spend inside of this prep mission as mentioned before. Once you hit the final bank, it's a relatively short drive to the location to drop off the money as well. But the best way, of course, to lose your 5-star wanted level is by going off-road and following the route that I'm taking here. For the reason that, for some reason, once again, there are no helicopters existing within this, and police officers don't have any idea about people going off-road to avoid cops, because they typically drive on the main roads. Once you have delivered the cash, the mission will be over, you will be paid, and you can go on your merry way. And that does bring us to the end of this guide. Thank you all so very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed or found it useful. Subscribe for more. And if you really like what you see on the channel, consider becoming a member like Chloe, Robert, Alus Fire, Captain Price, Shakulu, and Dr. Strange Love. Join them and all the other fellow members by clicking the join button down below. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all later.